Hey, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to the interview series. Um, I'm still Daniel, and we're uh, we're on Skype with um, with Jenny Mustafa Julak. And Jenny, uh, she's affectionately known as Coach Jenny. We try to avoid any difficult last names. Um, I know it's it's been a struggle for me. Uh, no, but she's she's known as Coach Jenny, and um, she is the audacity coach. I I saw I saw her online. I saw her on YouTube, and I'm like, what the hell is an audacity coach? Um, Myself being quite audacious, I, I shot her an email, which she promptly ignored, and, <laughs> and then she emailed me back uh, telling me that she um, took me out of her spam box. So, uh, <laughs> with that wonderful lead-in, Jenny, why don't you tell us, tell us a little bit about who you are? Oh, sure. Daniel, thanks so much for having me on the show. This You're is welcome. really cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm an audacity coach. I give people cathartic shots for a living. Um, there are a lot of pretty awesome people out there who feel like their life isn't as awesome and extraordinary as it could be. Um, they're not broken, busted people, but they're pretty awesome and they want to elevate to even more extraordinary. So I help them figure out how to do that with my very soft, sweet, <laughs> approach, yeah. um, which I really just believe in tapping into your audacity to get comfortable with um, how freaking awesome you can be and then keeping the responsibility of becoming that awesome and, right. and working into your potential is really important. Um, and while that, does, that message doesn't resonate for everybody, it resonates for enough people that I feel like this is my calling. That's, and, that's, all, that's awesome. I mean, well, for, for, well let's, let's back it up. Like, there are no credentials to becoming an audacity coach. What do you, I mean, how do you even, come on, how do you get there? Fair enough. Fair enough. That's a good question. Um, credentials. Wow, big word. No, I have the fancy pants degree. Oh. Right? I have the master's degree. I did that whole thing. Um, and my audacity comes from a place of following all the rules that everybody I know. Right. We all followed the rules. We did what we're supposed to. I was a very good student. I went to school. Um, first, my family to graduate high school, let alone college, let alone grad school. Pat on the back. Aren't I cool? Did the big, awesome job. Look at me. Aren't I cool? And then I hated it. I absolutely hated what I was doing. And there are a ton of people that have had that experience where they're like, you know what, I want to be successful. But somehow along the way, that turns into I want to look and seem successful. Oh. And then that's what they're going for. And then they get there and it's like, well, this sucks. And unfortunately, a lot of people hang out in that horrible space forever. But people call me when they're ready to say, I don't know what I want, but it ain't. <laughs> wow. So let me ask you a question. This this brought something up. I don't know if you're a big like Tony Robbins fan. A lot of people think he's corny, and some of this stuff. I'm like, all right, all right, Tony, come on, come on. But but one thing I, I remember him saying a while ago when I was first kind of getting into this whole area of personal development, because I think personal development is is a really is a really big deal. Most people write it off as oh, that's you know corny self hypnosis stuff, but really there is a value to personal development, and I think that you have a lot of element to that in your coaching, but. Um, I remember, uh, I remember hearing that it's people are more likely to run away from things that are painful than they are to run towards things that are pleasurable. Do you, do you think that has any any resonance with you? Oh, definitely. I think I think a lot of people hang out in, in less than comfortable situations to avoid pain, like the plague. Mm. Um, people are terrified of the unknown. They're terrified of failing. They're terrified of making the wrong step. And even though they might know what they want and they might be really driven and excited about doing something, they find themselves getting stuck. You know, that, that very, very visceral stuckness feeling where it's like, God, if I, if I know if I go this far, I would be happier. I see that. That would be pleasurable. But this pain is a little less scary because that would mean I might have to make less money, or I might have to start over, because that's horrible. Yeah. I won't be at the high school reunion. <laughs> and, you know, I might piss off my boss, and my spouse, or my boyfriend or girlfriend might not um, be on board. You know, there's all these might nots, might nots, and fears that keep people stuck. And I think you're right. I think there is something to that. I don't know that people like the pain, but sometimes pushing through the pain means you have to go into a serious, uncomfortable territory, and yeah. that's a a deal breaker for too many people. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of like it's kind of like the the anecdote about the 
the dog who was laying on the nail and he was yelping and the, the nail wasn't painful enough for him to roll over, but it was painful just enough to cry, you know, yeah. kind of like that. Which and a lot of us kind of live our state, live our lives in that limbo state where we're not happy, but we're too we're too afraid of that. We're too afraid that it could get it could get more painful. We're already in pain, but it could get more painful. So better not move. Yeah. What sucked at work or what sucked in my relationship. There are so many people that have just kind of fallen into that as socially acceptable. Yeah. And yeah. the good news is there are more and more people who are saying, okay, yeah, self improvement, woo woo, crap. I hate that. I hate that too. I'm not about that. I have my own style, and if I resonate, cool. If I don't, cool. But the people who get me and get what I'm trying to do have that same feeling. Like, I want my life to be awesome. I don't want any woo-woo spiritual kind of thing to go with it, but I want my life to be awesome. I'm not doing enough. I'm not happy enough, and I deserve to be extraordinarily happy, so how am I going to figure this out? Well, I mean, and I think I think that most people get to that point that you're talking about, that, that breaking point or that decision point, and then they ask the same question that you asked, like, okay, how do I figure this out? And then they decide that there are too many steps to figure out the process, so then they retreat back into their their comfort zone, even if it's painful. So do you have any type of, I don't know, I guess that's where we say like maybe a framework, like a simple framework you could lay out for people that would help them to kind of get over that hump? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up. So <clears throat> my framework is four parts, and it's an acronym because I'm self healthy and acronyms are fun. And the acronym is PACT, P-A-C-T, to make a promise with yourself. And PACT stands for possibility, ambition, confidence, and tenacity. And really briefly, I'll just go through that. And what that means is possibility. When you figure it out, I don't know what I want, but I know what I need this. Open your mind to new possibilities. Go back and be that kindergarten kid who said, when I grow up, I want to be a fireman or all these different things. Yeah. You know a little bit more about the world. And really explore what could be you. The second piece is ambition, and this is the part that really scares a lot of people. They're afraid to actually just take a breath, step back from their career track, and just say what they want. This is what I want, and just admit it to themselves and say it out loud. The third is confidence. Okay, so great. You have these big possibilities. You know what you want, but if you don't have that, have that choice but to get there, it's all for naught. Yeah. You've got to build up the confidence that says, okay, I know this is unknown, and I know I'm going to fall on my butt. I might fail. I might make missteps. But you know what? I'm going to go for it anyway. And really finding that confidence is really key. And then finally, T for tenacity. Without tenacity, this is all useless. Because you might build up the confidence and then procrastinate, and then you're a failure anyway. So yeah. if you don't actually get stuff done and have the tenacity to push through, forget about it. So that's what you got to do. you got to make a pact with yourself and just make that promise and go through those steps and figure out all those four pieces and then you can do anything. You can tackle the world. I mean, you know, I, that sounds great. It's probably easier said than done, though, right? Oh my gosh, absolutely. <laughs> not a one-time thing. It's not like, oh, I can see the steps. I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm good to go. Just because maybe you apply that to your career and you make a job change, that doesn't mean you have to apply that to your career and you make a job jump. That doesn't mean that next year you're not like, okay, you know, this year, oh, you know, I, I switched careers. I have this new job that I really love. Everybody gets me this way. Man, I really want a relationship in my life. Though, now. Yeah, yeah. And you go through the process all over again. It's not something that's simple. It's it's not easy. Uh, it's not. I like to say audacity is not for sissies. It's not for people who want to dabble in. You can't dabble in audacity. Yeah. You have to jump in full force and just go for it, right? Um, and you need support. You need accountability. You need a team audacity. You need a team of people that are supporting you and helping you make that happen. And that's why I get to do what I do every day. I help people who are going through these experiences get through that process over and over again so that they feel really, truly in charge of their own lives. That's, I mean, that's, that's probably, I would say that's probably one of the most valuable things you can have is, is the ability to move forward and progress. I think pro probably, um, probably one of, I guess, as a human being, our, our greatest uh, asset is that we can look at ourselves objectively if we're really trying. We can look at ourselves objectively and then adjust, you know. Um, I think that 
the, the fact that we have the ability to kind of look at ourselves from an outside perspective and then look at our individual behaviors and change is a huge asset. But a lot of times we're so stuck in here that we can't even look at ourselves objectively, you know? Um, Yes. Seeing like excuses anymore. Sometimes you need somebody outside of you, or you need to have that objective view. If you can't, you can't find that objective view. You need somebody outside of you that just says, "That's a BS excuse." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need some good friends. I'm calling BS on that one. You yeah. Know, I hear what you're saying. I hear that you're scared. I recognize that. Acknowledge it. What would you like? Is he thinks he does something? <laughs> Now you gotta, yeah, yeah. Right? And so it's that kind of moment of, oh crap, now if I don't do that, yes. it's my fault. Yes. So it's a double edged sword there. What did I, um, oh man, I was just I was just working on an article and you're, I, I just brought this up. It's the double edged sword of, it's almost safer to say, I never quite figured out what makes, what makes me happy than say, I knew what it was and I didn't do it. That's more painful. Right. Yeah, because that's letting yourself down. Before it was an issue where you could, you know, where, uh, you know. I think I was talking about. Um, I think I was talking about uh, maybe becoming an entrepreneur versus working for for someone else. And like I used to work in a restaurant, and if I didn't make any money that night, I'd say, well, you know, it's not my fault. The restaurant was slow. I did the best I could. So, so even if I was feeling bad about my money situation, I could say, well, I tried my best. The restaurant didn't have any 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 get any guests. But now, if I'm on my own, supporting myself, if I don't make any money, it's my fault. You know, and then I can't blame anyone. So, so really, if I feel bad, I, you know, there's no point in me feeling bad. I just got to suck it up and then push through. Right. Um, well, that's what's so great about entrepreneurs. I mean, entrepreneurs start with audacity. You don't, you can't become an entrepreneur and say, I have an idea for a business that I want people to pay me to do or create without a little bit of audacity. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a special, it's a special breed of personal and it's not for everyone, for it's sure. Not. Well, you know, this brings me to a, um, something that I, I wanted to speak about specifically with kind of the, the younger market. We have a lot of people who are still, I think there's this this growing shift in our culture where half of our culture still feels like there's this um, American dream to be had, this traditional dream where you can just go out, throw your resume out there, get that great job and get your gold watch after 50 years, which I don't feel like that works anymore. That's just me. I don't feel like that's the reality. And then you have this new generation of these these entrepreneurs who are who are hustling and I feel like, um, for me at least, when I graduated from school, I felt like, I felt like if, if, if you know, life was now the, the swimming pool, everyone was jumping in. They were saying, come on, Daniel, come on, jump in. The water is great. And I'm standing at the pool with my water wings like, I don't know. I don't like this. You know, this is not what I envisioned it to be. And I, I feel like a lot, of, um, a lot of young people now are at that point where either they have decided they, they, haven't want, they don't want to jump into this, basically this, this shitty situation or they're already in the shitty situation they want to get out is there any specific advice you give to young people if they're already unhappy with their lives to start changing it now rather than wait until 30 40 50 and then deciding yes the first thing i can say to you is to decide to decide oh okay this is really key because most of the time we like to have this conversation for years of what i could do or would do if i had the money or you know, and stay in that kind of shitty situation for as long as physically possible mm -hmm. because figuring out what I want is scary. So the first step to all of this is just deciding that you are going to make a decision of what's next. You don't have to decide what you're going to do for the rest of your life. That model is dead, to your point. We don't sign a contract at 22 years old, <laughs> out of school, and say, oh, cool, I get to retire in 47 <laughs> Yeah. Now what we do is we say, okay, what's next? 
what am I excited about next? And as soon as the sparkle starts to dull on that thing that you're doing, time to start figuring out what's next. Interesting. Doesn't it necessarily mean a new job? It could mm. be a new promotion. It could be a new project. It could be a new pair of shoes. I don't care. But it is figuring out, you know, how do I know when the sparkle is diminishing when you shine it back up and figure out what's next? We gotta next. shine it back up. That's, that's interesting. You know, um, I, and you know, I'll, I'll let you go on and protect your time. Uh, one, one thing I always, I always uh, kind of have, have preached in a way is that being a, a jack of all trades is a mastery. A lot of people make the assumption that um, if you have great, you know, width in a lot of fields that you don't have as much depth and that that's a bad thing. But my, my uh, inclination is to think that if you um, if you've tried a lot of different things, it doesn't mean that you're ambivalent or that you're fickle. It just means that you're you have a lot of really cool interests, and um, and that can also that can also help aid you possibly in finding that sparkle is to to you know um, to pursue multiple interests, not feel like well I've already picked accounting, so I better just go deeper in accounting or different accounting, but it's accounting, you know. If, if you like, even even people who run professional career tracks, if you're if you're a doctor for you know five or ten years, you can stop being a doctor if you want to. That would be okay, you know. But um, but that's also that's counterintuitive and that's countercultural, you know. It's definitely countercultural. It's not the way that people want to see you on LinkedIn. Yeah. They want to see you <laughs> a, a crescendo. Yeah. Right? The same exact uh, field or the same exact career choice or area. Absolutely, I hear what you're saying. But that, again, is the old model. Now, the old model might fit some people. You know, maybe you want to have an amazing career in the health industry, but you want to have a variety of experiences within the health industry. Or maybe on the other side, you're more interested in the actual task that you do, your actual craft. Maybe you're into design, but you love designing for a multitude of things. You want to do ebooks for entrepreneurs. Yep. You want to design the new logo for the new Department of Homeland Security. You know what I mean? You want to do all these different things. So there's so many different ways. So I would say, I hear what you're, I totally hear what you're saying, but that's one approach. That's one way of looking at it. Yep. Those folks who have what I like to call, ooh, shiny disorder. <laughs> shiny. I'm going to go over there. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. If ooh, shiny keeps you moving forward, <laughs> if it keeps you from actually accomplishing anything. Yeah. And you're just getting distracted and not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that, uh, that slogan too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that on someone. They're gonna think I'm really creative. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I stole it from somewhere. So yeah. Um, well, okay. So Jenny, so, so if someone want, if, so if someone thinks, you know what, I am after, after listening to Coach Jenny, I am really lacking in the audacity department. How would they contact you, and what, what products or programs you have to offer? Just tell us a little bit about your services. Sure. Now you don't. Now you don't assault anybody physically. No, I've never physically hurt. In fact, I don't physically shove people. It's a cathartic shove. I shove your catharsis. I shove yeah. your catharsis. Not yeah. sure if that's dirty or not. <laughs> well, Jenny, you know I'm going to talk. Uh, let's just talk briefly after we end the call. But um, but I really appreciate you you being on on the um, on the call with me today. And I think I I feel like 
I feel like I've gotten even more insight into kind of what made me tick in the past and what kind of pushed me forward without even knowing that I had all that audacity going for me. So I'm happy. To, I'm happy to be here. Oh, well, thank you so much. This is a, this is a thrill, and I'm really excited about what you're doing. I think it's really, really great to be capturing all this different expertise, and I'm going to definitely spread the word to my peeps as well. Oh, well, thank you.